They're the liberal rednecks. They like cornbread, but sex they care way too much, but don't give a fuck. They're the liberal rednecks that makes some people upset, but they got three big old dicks that you can suck. Goes turn this party up, check to check, check, check to check it out. What, 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 what's it all about? Yeah, that's one of them that and like. And it's like burp, 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 burp. Let's turn this, turn this party, party out. out. I think there's yeah. a part in the middle that we're missing. I think that's one of those fucking songs that like I, I've heard that probably just as much as I've heard any other song on planet Earth, and I don't know any of the goddamn lyrics except for yeah. that. Not sure I know what you're talking about. Check to uh-uh. check, check, check to check it out. You don't know that song? <laughs> I'm about to try to find what? it by that. Check the check. Hey, am check I wrong that that was out. really popular? Or me and you the only ones what, that know that what, song? What's it all about? Hang on, Google's giving me a little bit of something. Uh, that's the Beastie Boys. Yeah, Beastie Boys. Uh, ch- check it out. I, the opening track no. and lead single from the Beastie's sixth studio album, To the Five Burrows. Uh, I know like three Beastie okay. Boys songs off the top of my head. Well, like I'm it. saying though, it's I know where, some more than Joe. So it's the part we left out is so it goes check to check 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 to check it out. What what what, what what's it all about? Work what 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 work we'll work it out. Let's ah. turn this fucking motherfucking party out. So there okay, you have it. well, it's work. This it actually out that we it, forgot. This actually segues decent into something I wanted to say just right up top. We hadn't. Uh, put over anyone that wasn't like directly on the show in a while but i got to i i know that you don't be listening to new music trey and mm-hmm. that's fine that so mm-hmm. it's through no fault of yours but i know that i don't Drew, believe in it i know and that's fine and hey <laughs> i respect the shit out of it there's certain <laughs> things that there's certain things that i too am dumb about yes uh but i was and i reserve the right to be dumb about those things um but New music that uh, relatively new that's just come out that I'm just now getting around to listening to. Um, friend of the show, Adeem the Artist, they their uh, new album White Trash Revelry is fucking awesome. Uh, stan- uh, I'm sh- at least two out of three stamps of approval from Well Read, and I promise you, I can speak for Trey. He would love it if he'd he'd heard it. Uh, it's great, and I think y'all should pick it up. It's fucking awesome. <clears throat> Man, what's your favorite track? I think mine's Going to Hell. I, I, dude, I was just about to pitch here. I was like, he's got songs about going to hell with a Dean the Artist. Or, or they, drops have songs own, about- they drop their own name yeah. like a rapper. <laughs> yeah. Bring that into country music. Yeah, and the opening track, Carolina, I just, you know, it was a great opening track for me because I it, it just it just is good country music, you know, it's fucking tremendous. So I have I couldn't, t- I've only listened to it once all the way through, so I can't tell you all the tracks off the top of my head, but I know go to hell because I went when when they dropped their own name, I was like, God damn, who does that? What who who are they, Hank? You know what I mean? Like, this is great. And uh it's about going to hell and being queer and all that stuff. And it's just it's right up your alley, Trey. I mean, yeah, gotta, sounds like it. You might have to check yeah, checking a lot of it's boxes. phenomenal. Oh. If you buy it physically, when you open it up, your boy is on the inner lining. That we did oh, a, word? Yeah, we did a like a Last Supper. They did a set up a Last Supper style, you know, feast for the inner okay. line picture. I did not know that. I'll have to get. Uh, I mean, I was going to get the full album for other reasons, but I got to get it now because you're on in there. Hey, we might see them I actually. The and, did you really? No. On I which just track? Been saying that. I just been saying that on the internet. <laughs> Dude, telling, you, telling I wanna, Kyle, okay. who's my buddy who produced it, that uh, <laughs> if they'd listened to me, they'd have a lot better album on their hands. It's been a whole okay. Thing. I saw that you said that you played jugs and you've been lying a fuck ton on the internet lately. And I don't, and that's not a complaint. I'm for it. Keep doing it. Cause it's been great. Matter of fact, uh, your Christmas gift that I got you is based on a recent lie that you have told about yourself. I, I brought that, that into the, fuck. well, I, I had to yeah. just because I saw this. Yeah, go ahead, Trey. I, well, actually I was going to send it in a text privately to the two of you, but since we're on here, I was just going to say, I'm a, uh, this is an excuse, but the way I was going to frame it is just so y'all know. So with all the, I'm having to get all kinds of shit together with a lawyer and a, and a, a portable dumpster and all this stuff. Cause I'm having to fuck with the house I grew up in on this trip back to Tennessee. So I'm trying to get all them ducks in a row before <clears throat> leaving. In addition to, you know, getting my sister's kids presents and shit like that. So I was just, I didn't put expect it out. anything. 
on front street to y'all that I ain't getting y'all shit this year. And I'm saying it's cause I'm, I got too much going on. So just well, I don't care. Know. I didn't, I didn't go to this, listen. I didn't go to get y'all stuff at all, but while I was in this store, I saw something and I had been reading this thing of Drew's and I was like, ah, fuck, I'm getting this for Drew. And then of course I was like, well, I'll get Trey something. And y'all, you just happened to be in the same store. I was like, look right there. That'll hit. So not a lot of thought went into it, except for I just saw a thing and I, and I thought Drew would enjoy it. Anyways, we might see a Dean the Artist in Nashville where we're going to be this uh-huh. weekend. Tomorrow, if you're listening to this when it drops, uh, the 15th through the 17th that Zany's in Nashville. Uh, you can go to wellreadcomedy.com to get those tickets or you go to Zany's website. However you want to get them. We don't give a shit how you get them. We just want you to be there. I think... Uh, both late shows are sold out. Thursday's getting no. close, and there's still no, no, some. No, 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 uh, no. Other way around, homie. Other way around. Early, early shows. That's no, what I meant. Yeah, you're right. I don't know why, what I was thinking. Stuff available still. Uh, and Thursday right. is close to sold out, but I think you, if you want to go at a not late time, I think Thursday's still an option for now. Uh, right. Either so, way, yeah. come see us. <clears throat> yeah. This does it. be fun. We're also going to uh, see friends of the pod, Elizabeth Cook and Wade Sapp. I'm going to go see Wade in Nashville Wednesday. So if you're in Nashville Wednesday and you got something to do, go see Wade Sapp. I'll be there. Oh, where was he playing? I don't remember. Yeah. You guys got to Iceman East or, you know. That's probably like right. Room. Yeah, right. I'm glad they redid that. It's a great venue. What else is new, Trey? Um well, I had a couple. Uh, so I had a couple of, I think, at least mildly humorous interactions over the weekend that I wanted to run by y'all. I thought might make for good podcast fodder. I actually already texted this to the group, but I think y'all were both out of pocket, and maybe you didn't see it, or if you did, it doesn't matter. We're going to rehash it again. So I said last week on the show that I had a, I had a set in Santa Monica at a, a new club down there. I went there and did it, and on the show there was this uh, very nice, very attractive. I mean straight up gorgeous honestly black man uh brown brown man uh <laughs> i knew it was a man i knew it was yeah. a man yeah brown man uh a comic and a foreign comic he's not american right he's not a native and uh and he got like a brown sand sounding name all of which is fine with me obviously he's Thank later you. in the show i i went up like near the beginning and i did well and after it was over he comes up to me and he was like and I'm not going to do his accent because that's relevant to the whole thing here. He comes up to me and he's like, uh, <laughs> is that your real? But he's got a thick accent. He's like, is that your real accent? And I was like, yeah. And which is funny because I have jokes making fun of people asking me that. But because he's not even American, you know, I'll that's fine. Right. Uh, but he's like, is that your real accent? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, I fucking love it. I really wish I could, I wish I could do that accent. Cause that's like, that accent's awesome. I wish I could do that accent. And I said, yeah, well, likewise, man. Right. And he looked really like t- taken aback by that. Like <laughs> he, he looked at me like, uh, okay. Right. Like it wasn't like, it wasn't cool to say. Right. And now right. But here's, here's the thing. Here's the twist though. Right. I know what you're thinking. It's like, right. yes, a white dude is not supposed to do, uh, you know, the voice of a brown dude, right? But this dude, while he was a brown dude, he was from France, and his <laughs> accent was French. He had a French accent. So, like, I, w- I was indignant about it. I, in my head, yeah, I didn't course. say anything, but in my head, I was like, what? I'm not allowed to do a fucking French accent? He's like, that's not, that ain't it. Like, if you had, you know, a more brownish accent, then, yeah, I'd be an asshole for saying that. But, like, French, I can't do French. I'm allowed to do French. That wasn't out of well, pocket, you know. And frankly, I had this whole thing blazing in my head, you know, where I'm just like, no, that that wasn't offensive. I didn't do anything wrong. He's fucking French. I'm, I can do French if I want to. Anyway. Well, no matter what, you're not an asshole for just saying likewise. You would have right. been, if he if he had, a, like, a Pakistan accent, you'd have been an asshole if you turned around and did some Pakistan shit to him. But just saying likewise, yeah. no. And that right. is fucking proof about the goddamn French right there you know what i mean like every single (laughs) fucking thing that you hear about him is true and i have heard you do a french access to some acclaim over on our podcast putting on airs and i would rather you do that than anything and it's not offensive because it's pitch perfect it's funny i I talked to this dude a little bit and he really like i said he was extremely complimentary to me and he was a really nice guy he was but these two interactions it was just i felt like it was me 
being classically uh, awkward or putting my foot in my mouth is more the point mm-hmm. of them. Except the, the <clears throat> accent thing again, I'm defensive about because I'm like, no, French don't count. I don't, you know, that ain't <laughs> that ain't one. Of, but anyway, the second one was this other comic on the show. She mentioned on stage that she grew up in a video store that her parents owned a video store when she was a kid. So when she came back to the green room after getting done, I was like, you really grew up in a video store? She was like, yeah. And I said, I did too. And she was like, what? Oh my God. What? So then we're both like, now we're talking about it. And he was sitting there on the couch and he was like, what are you guys talking about? And I said, well, we just found out that like, we both like grew up in video stores, our, our family's own video stores when we were kids. And the guy's like, what oh um, what like that and i said i said a video store you know like a like a movie rental place he was like no i know what a video store is he's like i know you th-. he was like he was like he was like i know you think because i got this accent or i know you think because i'm foreign and i'm uh r-worded or whatever but i know what video <laughs> store means and i and, and i was like I, I once again didn't do anything i wanted to go into a full bore meltdown that i you know am capable of doing and he being like, thought being like no 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 it's because it's because they're extinct see like i, I feel right. like people forget like they're not a thing and they haven't been a thing for 15 right. years so i didn't mean because you're foreign i meant because like they're not a thing anymore but i didn't i just did all also, that he literally head. said what do you mean i know i know but again, right, so I, have, I talked to this dude a lot. And ahead, he was very, very nice. It's just those two interactions I thought were funny. And it's like, is that a lost in translation thing or just whatever? Different cultures, just just all of that. I just thought it was funny. Oh, well, I, I have two questions. One's a point of clarification. You cut out a little bit for me. You may have made this clear, but I swear you said that you only said likewise, but then you talked about doing an accent. Did you or did you not do the man's accent? No, I didn't do his accent. No, I just told him, you know, I'd like to. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then, oh, you said you wanted to do his accent? He, yes. He, he finished. He finished, <laughs> we, we with, he finished his statement with, I wish I could do your accent. And I said, well, likewise, man, like, I wish I could do yours, too. And when I said that, he looked at me like, what the fuck? Cause it, and, and again, it feels like if he was Pakistani or something, I would totally get why. <laughs> but yeah. because I he's wouldn't. French. I mean, wouldn't? every uh, comic yeah. knows you want to do it, even if well, like, they know yeah, you right. want to. <laughs> but yeah. but again, second point of clarification, are you certain he was French? Or just had a yep. French accent. No, no. He got up on when okay. he went up okay. on stage at the end of the night. He talked a lot about being French and being from France, and also okay. he also not for nothing talked a whole lot about uh, pussies and nipples and stuff, which felt very yes. French to me. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. <laughs> we um, have a skunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is rappy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just stealing your bit from putting on airs, by the way. I just always loved how you said rapey in French. Sounds better. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize at first you were talking about the rapey skunk cartoon. I thought you were talking about a pussy smelling like a skunk because it was a French woman. And, buddy, oh, nice. it was doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> she got that skunk pussy. Yeah, that's, what I, that's that was one of his bits, actually, I think. <laughs> She had that <laughs> skunk pussy. I put that baguette in her skunk pussy. <laughs> whatever this is, whatever yeah. this is, I want to go on tour with this and DJ Butt. I want DJ yeah. Butt and this comedian you're doing to go on tour together. <laughs> maybe maybe do a collab, like a little song. He got that skunk pussy. He got that skunk pussy. Oh la la, we we we. Yeah, yeah, dude. Fuck the French. Fuck them. Yep. We uh, got two be French by Morocco, listeners. I hope. Oh, are they still in it? Oh, yeah. yeah. They play Morocco oh. in the semis. Um, yeah, it would hit if they got beat by Morocco, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, who's like Mar- the who's like the 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 one to beat right now? Because I stopped paying attention. France. France? It's France or Argentina or are the Argentina. two favorites in their respective yeah. semis. Go but Argentina. I would say I would say France is probably favored against Argentina right now. I mean, they're the defending okay. champions, but also evidently they're the first defending champions. They're the best player in the world. Yeah. They, but they, uh, apparently they're the first defending champions to even make it back to the semis of the following World Cup since like 1998 or something. So, uh, so yeah, they hit. Uh, they, it should have at least went to they extra time hit. against England. That's a thing I wanted to talk to y'all about, actually. Uh, I, good. Because I hate think, it. Do you think you hate what? 
the how soccer be with extra time and how it's just a guess. Okay. It's like doing your taxes. The game well, that, is just like, hey, you play not, however long we tell you, and we can we can talk about that for sure if you want to. But I, I that wasn't what I meant. But I'll tell you what I meant. Whatever right after this, yeah, right after this. <laughs> so obviously, Cho, you haven't kept up with the World Cup at all, right? You didn't know that France. Not since was, I, so you didn't know that <laughs> France and England played on Saturday. No, I didn't. I stopped paying attention when I, 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 uh, I, I uh, you know, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. It was hard for me to watch it without gambling because I was like, well, gambling will make it interesting. And then I regrettably, well, not regrettably for my bank account, but for my morals, I, uh, I bet on Saudi Arabia in the greatest World Cup upset ever. And I hit that. And after that, I was like, I'm fucking out. You know what I mean? And then America was gone. I'm like, eh, I got my I mean, shit. That's pretty incredible one to hit on. Cause yeah, that was wild as hell. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, especially cause like if you're going to bet on the Saudis, that's like the one thing you shouldn't have bet on them winning at. <laughs> eh, it's like it, you know, it wasn't a Saudi totally. contest that was offensive. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, dude, you can say it because fuck it. You, fuck you, can't, you can't say that. Uh, yeah, dude, so, fuck them. They don't hit. So, England and France played in the quarterfinals, right? And actually, three comedians that's, were found dead right after recording their podcast on Wednesday. That's what they actually had a heart issue, dude, and it was really hot out. <laughs> the dude, uh, the comic I was talking about when I f- first found out he was from France, I said, "Oh, damn, you excited about today?" And he was like, "What do you mean excited?" And I said, "You know, the World Cup match." And he was like, "He was like, no, we take it for granted. It's not even exciting anymore." <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Like, like yeah, an Alabama fan. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Do you remember that? Anyway, um, England played France. All right, France ended up winning two to one. England's best player, Harry Kane, right? Uh, who, like, despite being an f- English soccer pro, to have to see Fox tell it is apparently uh, he idolizes Tom Brady all the way from mm. over there. I guess. <laughs> but anyway, game recognized game. Yeah, right. But Harry Kane, England's best player. Uh, he took two penalties, right? You know, a penalty, you know, a penalty shot, Joe. Like a penalty yeah, the occurs front in the box. And they, it's just it, a that's shooter. not a corner, right? No, it's just okay. in front of the goal, a shooter yeah, yeah. and the goalie, yeah. and that's it, right? Yep, yep. He took two. The first one, he drilled immediately. I texted the group thread right after he hit it, and I was like, honestly, I don't even know what the fuck a goalie is supposed to do on a penalty. Just guess yeah. correctly guess, and yeah. pray you have to get because, like, there's no fucking way you can like, right do anything else you just have to pick a side and hope right basically like so literally like what does he normally do i'll do that right and they're teammates too francis goalie right. and harry kane are teammates in the premier league right so everybody was like he knows what kane does all this shit but he guessed wrong on the first one kane scored they got it now later late in the game like with 10 minutes or something left something like that not much time left france is up two to one right and Harry Kane gets another penalty, okay, against his former teammate. This time, he kicks it straight way to fuck over the top of the goal, like missed the mm-hmm. goal entirely, scaled, skied it into the stands, right? I don't know. And England, uh, England ended up losing two to one. Um, and I was just the thing I wanted to talk to you all about was. I, I, world class athletes are obviously different in a whole lot of ways. Maybe they have to be different in this regard too. But they're also so competitive. I'm just—I feel like if anything comparable like that happened to me, which I don't even know what it would be if we if we had some big, there was some big live television event or something that we yeah, were right. on, and I and I fucked up what the bit we were doing. Like I, you know, yeah, right. it specifically. It, it's even it's bigger than that. It's, it's fucking. Yeah, it's I was about to say because that, it, we like, could probably make that work. You know, maybe. But I'm saying if we didn't, if I fucked yeah, it right. up and everybody knew I fucked it up, like, bro, dang, I still got shit from fifth grade that wasn't even that yeah. big of a deal that pops up in For my sure. head sometimes. Remember when you did that dumb shit? Like, yeah, I just don't think I could ever, 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 ever get I think over about that something all the time. like that. And like. I just wonder, do you think they're different? Like playing and existing at that level makes them different? Because like I wouldn't, I don't, I couldn't never get over that if I was. Well, it's ever. It's very cliche, but like the whole phrase, like it's not, you know, how many times you fall, it's how many times you get up or whatever. Like I do think that that's one of the things those type of people are the best at. Like 
you know, in golf, it can happen shot to shot. It's like you hit just the worst fucking shot of your life, and the best players in the world can reset themselves and go, okay, that happened. I can't do anything about it. The only thing I can do is do better on this shot. Now, granted, they're still in the hunt when you miss that and then you lose the game like it's over then. But, like, I I do think that they're – World class athletes are more mentally tough than you and me. Yeah, yeah, sure. I can do. But yeah. but there's definitely I mean, I think about that with kickers missing like, you know, the, the guys that miss PATs now to lose a game. Like even in a fucking regular season game, I'm like, bro, how do you go to the goddamn store? Like I couldn't fucking do it. Like I fucked up on circle TV. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. It, it, like <laughs> on the Grand Ole Opry network. And I would do if if they started luckily i fucked up so bad that they just don't air that shit but like if they were airing it right now and i had a bunch of money i'd pay all that money to bury that shit that's how embarrassed i was of it and i'm certain that most people are like well it's not a big deal but it was pretty rough to me but like if i fucked up in an objective way i'd kill myself so one thing i would like (laughs) one thing i would like to add to that though is penalty kicks (laughs) Um, I'm serious. Harry Kane has a high percentage. I was trying to find it, and weirdly, like when you type in Harry Kane PK percentage, it doesn't just pop up. There's like all these other wild stats. But I remember they showed a graphic right before he took either the first or second one, and it had uh, penalty kicks in international play. Oh yeah, exclusively. It didn't do any of his shit with Tottenham, and it looked like it was about twenty to twenty five. Yeah. And blue uh-huh. was he made it, and red was either got blocked or he right. missed. And it looked like he was about 21 of 25. Um, that's a really ridiculously high rate, obviously. That's about 80%, 84%. But it's not 100%. I would so – so what it would come down to is you having to, like, decide in your heart as an athlete, did I choke – Mm-hmm, or did right. I just miss that one out of 20 that I'm always right. going to miss or right. two out of 20? I'm terrible at reverse uh, percentages, but I I do think he, I don't want to say choke, but he missed. As Trey pointed out, he kicked it over yes, he the He sailed goal. it. Yeah, right. It wasn't he like the goalie to go got high it. Yeah. So where the goalie couldn't get it, which is risky. I mean, that's another thing yeah. that I've noticed, Trey, watching World Cup this month. There's been a lot of penalty kicks in the tournament because – uh, if you tie at the end of double overtime, you have to just yeah. do five penalty kicks a piece. Wait, they have double overtime? I thought they just play for ninety goddamn well, I mean, minutes. Dude, it's a world no, they Cup play for a hundred and they have to. They have right, to find somebody a way. It'd be, like, it'd be like a Super Bowl. Yeah. The Super Bowl is not going to have yep. a tie. You know, like. but, okay. So, but when did they start doing that? Because in the America, goddamn, in the the group they didn't do stages, that shit. Okay, it, the group stages is not the tournament hasn't started yet. Well, if you qualify for the tournament, the round of sixteen, that's the knockout rounds, and at that point, from that point on, there can't be no draws. Yeah, because see, so, that's when I stopped. I started tuning out when everybody was like, "That's a good draw. That's a good draw right there." I was like, "Get the fuck out of here with this communist so, bullshit." So, um. Thanks, Pat Paul. So uh, <laughs> I noticed that on the penalty kicks, some people would go right up against the post. Right. And no fucking goalie can block that. Right. Unless they just like ridiculously took a risk and jumped early. Right. They would but have to like, take the same risk. But very few people did it. Like most people kicked it, not right at the goalie, but not over up against the pole. And that surprised me. I don't know how you feel about it, Trey. It really shocked me. To me, it felt like, dude, fucking go for it. Like, like put it in the – the edge it in there. Right. You're a professional. Right, that's what you, you do. You should be yeah. able to do I guess, this, I mean, but I mean, I'm, I'm clearly I'm assuming, wrong. Yeah, well, and I don't know shit about – so I'm your typical American where soccer is concerned, but I'm assuming it's probably they don't – like you just alluded to, they, you know, there's a larger margin for error. Error if you if you try to get as close to the side as possible, where the goalie can't even get to it, that makes it easier to fuck up in the other direction. I'm assuming is what their thought process is. Right. Also, they were speculating, they were speculating the announcers and shit were speculating during that match that. So essentially, the goalie really does kind of guess which way right. the guy is going to go, basically, and. Again, the, that French goalie and Kane are teammates professionally, and they were speculating that on the second kick, the one he sailed, that uh, that he saw that the dude had guessed correctly, like right. that 
that he he was like, oh shit, he's got me. And then right. he sort of like he tried to like pull up on it or whatever to like right. put a little more air under it to get over him because stank. he knew. I believe it's called stank. Put a little more stank on it, and he put way, way too much stank on it, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, lost it. Cursed, cursed England in the year of the Queen's death. <laughs> well, well my my theory, <laughs> I think yes. it's also close to like Mark Smart Mark's old theory on NFL coaches. Quickly for people listening. Mark Smart Mark says that a lot of coaches will play in close games not to get fired rather than play to win. They won't do anything super risky that might win them the game. They'll just be conservative so they don't get fired. I can't help but feel like with PKs, there's a little bit of that going on where it's like, well, the goalie might block it, but I won't be the heel who missed the goal. I'll be the guy who got unlucky. But, like, there's a part of me that's like, this is my tying. Corey, there's a part right. of me that's like, son, fucking go for the dagger. If you're down exactly. two, shoot a three. Yeah, right. I'm with you, dude. I'm <clears> fucking <throat> with you. But like with with a situation like this where, I mean, don't get me wrong, sailing it, that's, you know, is I mean, is that the equivalent of like an air ball? Like yeah. in, in, from the, okay, guess, right. Yeah. So, so that like, cause to me, I'm just like, yeah, I Whereas like if you barely happen. miss or you hit the post and it bounces off, it's like, fuck, he went for the risky shot and he missed. I think I could, yeah, right. I still think I could get over that one more than I could something that was just straight up. Like, okay, the fact that Dan Orlovsky is still on this earth with us is <laughs> I couldn't have done it. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> that's run out of bounds. You to kill yourself. Run out of bounds. Yeah. yeah, dude. Because that's way different. That's like, doc, like only like we when you when you when you, if someone said. Hey, dude, ran out of the uh, back of the end zone. Everyone would go, Dan Orlovsky. Like, if someone said, that, well, that, hey, this that dude literally that sailed the ball, they'd mention a million. Well, that, yeah, the right, other day. <laughs> that, that, like, that literally happened this year. I thought it was so funny because it was Jimmy G before he got hurt. Jimmy G ran yes, out of the was. back of the end zone. Yeah. But we don't remember and, Jimmy G. And everybody, everybody was like, e- including me, I texted y'all when it happened. I was like, <laughs> yeah. LOL, Jimmy G just Orlovsky'd, right? Yeah. And everybody on Twitter was like, Jimmy G just Orlovsky. Like everybody was calling it Orlovsky and everyone knew what that meant. And then Dan Orlovsky was like, Thank God I'm finally free <laughs> or whatever. Free. And yeah. I was like, No, you ain't uh, buddy. You know uh, how I know? Because everybody just called what he did your name. So, <laughs> and so did I it. after Jimmy G did it. <laughs> yeah, right. Dude, yeah. Like they, people don't they forget. ran it all day on ESPN <laughs> with yeah, him in the room. I was yeah. somewhere in a hotel, so I was just like watching TV all day. They ran it all day with him. They were laughing and pointing at him. Also, side note, our fans don't care about this. Why does he not look like a football player? I know that they lose weight when they get out of the league, but like yeah. fucking David, uh, what's his name? He Jordan looks like Boy. a tech guy. Jordan. Pollock doesn't look like a defensive end anymore. He still looks no. like a wide receiver. Orlovsky looks like a nerd. Yeah, he does. He looks like a tech bro. I like Orlovsky for the record because he, he is like he's really like he takes it in stride. You know what I mean? He makes Has fun to. of himself. He's a fucking dork. Wait, dude. Well, that's what I was. But also, you just with a situation like that, like you, you literally have to be into the joke for your sanity. Like if that had happened to like. uh Fucking what was homie that you used to uh uh Antonio Brown he had killed himself. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but the okay, or the and dude that used to play the used to dude that used to play quarterback for the Bears that's a huge dickhead. Jim McMahon. Uh, Jay J- Jim McMahon. Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler. <laughs> Jay Cutler. Oh, yeah. I went yeah. too far back. Yeah. They may have had two yeah. of them. Yeah. 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 Jay, Jay Cutler. Those two were very similar. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine that Jay Cutler would have went with the joke. He would have doubled down on being an asshole and shit about it. And I don't think he would be handling it as well as Jimmy uh, Dan Orlovsky. Like, there's a special type for that. Russ uh, uh, would kill himself or somebody. Westbrook. Yeah. Uh, no, Wilson. Oh, Russell Wilson. No, he that would hit. So he would. He would like. <laughs> he would get real. <laughs> he would get. It wouldn't. But I'm saying he'd get real dorky about it. I wish he would do that shit, like run out of the back of the end zone, not kill himself. Philip Rivers would be mouthy about it, but he would say things that were true. He'd be like, yeah, is that what they said on the internet? Some fat fuck in his mom's basement. Well, he doesn't cuss, but well, some he fat say dude that. in his mom's basement. Oh, so I'm a gosh darn dumb dumb now. Okay, you throw the gosh darn ball. That's what <laughs> yeah. Philip Rivers would yeah. say. There's three people in the world who can do this better than me. They're all yeah. legends. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah, think I don't anybody know, drew- I, I don't have the mental fortitude for it. I don't think anybody, Drew, looks less like 
a former super hitting athlete who is in fact a former super hitting athlete more frankly than our Lord and Coach Savior, Hopple. Josh Heupel. Yeah, that's my like. <laughs> yeah. I love him, but he but I he looks him. like a he's lineman. great. Yeah, right. No, I don't know. See, I think like I feel like a lot of times though, like Mike Vrabel he looks like Mike, a Wendy's manager, bro. Mike Mike Vrabel is like you know he's like oh, a middle yeah. he's, he's like he's a middle aged. He's like a middle aged dude with a. He's got like a beer gut and shit now, or what? He's not like ripped, like he's in the league, but like he looks like he used to be, right? Because yeah. he did. Yeah. That, and Dan Golic. Campbell's the, Dan Campbell's the same way. Most, but like Hypel though, I mean, he yeah, literally he looks literally, like Bobby he used Hill. to be in the bowling <laughs> league. Yeah, yeah exactly. for sure. Right. I, again, I love him. He rules, but like, he looks like yeah. he's from Oklahoma. I mean, I'll tell you that yeah. much. Where is oh, he from? He's actually, though, South Dakota or North? South Dakota. One of the, yeah. one of the Dakotas. I yeah. hope he's funneling gravy into his mouth right now. I think Me he too. deserves to he eat does. all the apps, and he clearly does. Um, <laughs> but it's wild how many chins he's got. And and here's the thing: as somebody who grows a beard out, because it, no matter even Me when too. I'm in the best shape of my life, like there's a little gullet right here because I don't have a real strong chin. Like a jawline's good, chin's bad. The, nothing makes you look less athletic. Than a weak chin. that fucking goofy yeah, with a baby face, and then he's got like triple that. You know, he has mm-hmm. what I have, and he's fat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right? dude. Yeah, dude. Like I, this, like obviously, I still have a chubby face, obviously, but <laughs> just this, just this, does a whole lot of work. So much work. Like if I was to shave completely baby face right now, completely different dude, way fatter, dorkier looking. Uh, he needs to. I agree with you. He needs to grow a beard. I also look older when I shave now, and you know, I used to when I would shave. Me I would too. Look so much younger. A beard it's, has done yeah. nothing but help me. When I was twenty three, a beard made me look older, and now yeah. that I'm old, it makes me look younger. Beards. Hit. Me too. 100%. I don't know. It makes I don't my know. teeth look worse when I shave. It's been way too long since I've shaved all the way to uh, even know what it. it I, I used to be like it made me look weirdly young like compared to how old i was you know made me look like just a little baby, a broad, little baby face bitch you know you have such a broad um, manly mustache you got a caterpillar yeah. that when yeah. it goes away you do look less manly which we associate with younger youngness or whatever i don't like right. it either i fucking hate it when you shave it upsets me like i like your mustache a lot Oh, I hate it. And I'm not, you're not ugly. I just hate it. Like, I'm Hold not on. saying it I'm makes you look it. ugly. Are I'm we talking about it. all the way? Well, definitely all the way. But you mean that, even, but even like with this? No, that is fine. It's fine. But when you, when you, this is when you have, like the, this, this isn't when, what well, you thought. When you have the really good mustache, it's so good. And it infuriates me that you take that away from us <laughs> and world. yourself. I don't get it. I'm like, why would you, I'm like, why would you do that? Like, it's like if you started shaving your goddamn head. Do you know how mad I would get at you? Like, I'm already mad at you for having good hair, but I'd be madder if you had that good hair and shaved it. I feel the same yeah. way about your mustache. Because my mustache ain't bad, but it ain't, like, great. You spend way too much time thinking about his face. Well, that only just kind of... It's just coming out right now. You know what I mean? I yeah. don't spend a lot of time it on it. There. It's just that... It was, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Totally, yeah. These were I, feelings, I not thoughts. Those were emotions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What upsets so, you about me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we need to take a break. <laughs> Do we need to take a break right now? Or? No, we don't. I was making a okay. joke about if you were about to list all the shit that uh, you didn't like no, about me. No, which we don't you're pretty open that. about I'm about it. I've got to say, I've done it. We've done you all do it all the time. Before. We don't need yeah, to you don't wait. It, I don't you think. just no. fucking tell me all the time. I told I'm you your really poems didn't hit just the other day. You know? Yeah, he sure did. You can get them, by the way, at parttimefunnyman.com. What a you, what a ride that was, <laughs> <laughs> dude! That was so, it, that was so. What was they? I wrote poems and these motherfuckers. I've been writing poems at parttimefunnyman dot com, and I wrote one the other day uh, that was a comedy, but I was definitely trying to trick people. And <laughs> I shared it in a group. They were calling me names about something else. And I was like, hey, will you guys share my poem? And they were like, oh, my fucking God, this guy with his poems. And then Drew goes, what is it about ice cream without reading it? And I go, yeah. And he's like, shut the fuck up. And then he read it. And it was about ice cream. And then he called me Milk Shakespeare. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> and a bunch of other I things did. too. Buddy, I, I was proud of some of them. Uh, on paper, not the best, but to say out loud, I think Ralph Waldo Emerson Big Jowls Big is Jowls. the funniest yeah. fucking out loud. <laughs> that was pretty good. That, that was yeah. the one. That, that was the one that popped. That was the one that popped me the most. And uh, just to let our fans know, I, I read all of them to my sister, and she was dying laughing. And when she got done laughing, she goes, and I quote, "I don't think he did poems, but Ernest Milky Way." <laughs> and uh, it was uh, very, that's very, good. Very, very funny. It is good. So, anyways, uh, I'm fat and I do poems at parttimefunnyman.com. Yeah. Um, I was. I don't hit. I, I, did I don't something. think either of those statements are true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. You know what? I'll take it. That's the only time you've ever not. That's the only time you've ever not called me fat, and I'll fucking take it. I have. I don't know if I've ever called you fat, other than like looking oh at the. Fucking hold on, God. Hold on. Hold on. Other than like the rib picture, I very much enjoy making puns. That's a lot of fun. Oh, okay, uh, okay. But okay, like, sure. you've never Trey said the word the, fat. Hold on. Trey, yeah. Trey is the one who is always saying that you should be fat and he wants hey, you to you. be fat. It's very much, Supportive. it's not really my style, generally speaking, to go after you about your weight because it, I don't think it bothers you. So I prefer to go for other stuff. Okay. Well, I, the, the addition that you made there at the end definitely makes me want to give you a slide for this, but you've 100% called me fat. Okay. You haven't said the words, Hey buddy, you're fat because you are creative. <laughs> like you're, you are, you are. I'm like, going to so, start doing that. So, so yes, you're, so yes, your honor, you're right. On a technicality, he has never said you're fat, but cause you're more creative than that. You probably called me mayonnaise boy a bunch. <laughs> that's, that's just like, that's your name. Like, I don't oh, you know, know skinny people eat mayonnaise too you fat fuck like yeah well i'm just saying that drew i can't object to anything drew said about me in there because like yeah it's just yeah i but i've always done it in a supportive way like he said it's like i always said you know you're perfect you just the way you fat. are yes. Yes, parentheses exactly. as fat yes. Right. The, yeah, you're perfect. Everything about you is perfect, and you should love yourself for being the perfect version of yourself that you are. It's all I've ever said. You know, dude. How about this? I've been built body, body for that. Body positivity. That's I Trey. Six, Everybody knows that Trey is. Yeah, I lost six pounds today. So that's not what that ain't real. Yes, I, I did. You took a big poop, or you put a garbage yeah. bag on you. Well, and sweated yes, all okay. Or whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yes, all of those things, but still, it was water weight. But I had it to lose. So this morning, I woke. I haven't taken a proper shit since Thanksgiving. A uh, buddy, proper me either. shit. Really? Yeah. You, so you know what I mean by proper shit? Like you yes. squeeze a few out. Like, like it's like when you say somebody's like, uh. I'm like, oh, I haven't drank in a month. And they're like, you had two beers last night. And I'm like, no, I haven't drank in a month. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. So I, and, and finally this morning it happened. And buddy, it was a lot. And thank <laughs> God for it. And then I went on, and then I went on like a 30,000 step hike. And I feel like looking in the mirror, it's so clear that I had so much water weight and poop weight in my belly. Poop weight. And I don't, I don't think I'm much of a water weight guy. Oh, I am. I fluctuate I so either, hardcore. Really. I know that it's uh, I fluctuate, good for y'all. But the, the same way every day, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, I get like, it. Depending on the time of day, Half I weigh basically the same that I did the day before. I'll fluctuate during that day, but it ain't six pounds. Yeah, no. no uh, I'm, like a, I'm like a, you know, a, a fucking wrestler. Talking about Corey's poems and stuff, I did do something uh, <laughs> not long before we... No, it ain't got nothing to do with your poems. It's just in a similar vein, sort of. That I thought y'all would appreciate, and I've done stuff like this before. Oh, I've, you did something that don't hit. Yeah, well, it's. I think it's fun. It's just super <laughs> raven. I did a super <laughs> raven thing uh, without like, and did it genuinely without meaning to, and with no like, you know, it wasn't planned. So basically, <laughs> I was in the shower. You know, how your mind wanders in the shower or whatever. Yeah, and Aaron Sorkin I, taught me that. I started. Uh, I started thinking about. And I'm not going to go into the details of what this is because it would take me an hour and a half to do so. But I you? started thinking. I started thinking about this. Uh, I've had this sci-fi uh, concept in my head for a long, long time. I've told y'all about it, like mm -hmm. at certain points. But like the uh, southern like, one. It, no, it's a dis, no, that's a different thing. Oh, yeah, a, I know, I know the one you're talking about. Dystopian, a dystopian sci-fi where there's like an underground city, yeah, that people yeah, are yeah, living yeah. or whatever, and it's all like based on uh, class and whatever. It's you know, it's allegory, social commentary, whatever. You get it. Anyway, my mind shifted to that 
for whatever reason. And I started like, <laughs> I started visualizing this one big scene that I always mm -hmm. had in my mind for like the climax of it, like either the first season or, you know, whatever of this story. It's a big climactic scene that is like a, in a way, it's like a father son moment of sorts. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's real heavy and shit. And, but I, came up with all of this is my idea and my thing. And I'm just thinking about it in my own head and like uh, started crying. <laughs> <laughs> like I realized I was like, Oh my God, I'm getting choked up. This like, I, like, I like, yeah, I was like, this is so, that's too beautiful. I like you me. Know, like, I yeah, really right. like but me. Like, I just, and then I, I, I <clears throat> almost started crying without meaning to. And then I started laughing like uncontrollably at myself. Cause I thought it was so funny that I like moved myself to tears <laughs> with yeah. my, you know, with my own uh, creativity or ideas or whatever. Like, do y'all remember that time? We, You've done that before. We, I, yes. I was about oh, to bring yeah. it up. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was going to go there. We were, this is how I remember it. We were, I think we we're in Raleigh. I feel like this weekend we we're in Raleigh or I don't remember, but we were somewhere and we're all staying in the hotel. We meet in the parking garage of the hotel and someone, one of y'all goes, <laughs> I cried myself to sleep last night. And the other one was like, yeah, me too. And, uh, and I said, and I was like, Hey, I did too. And we're like all laughing about how we had cried <laughs> yeah. the night before. And you're like, what happened? And y'all explain what happened. I of course don't remember what y'all said, but then you like, why, why? And it, but y'all were like, why were you crying? And I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> because I decided to read the first ever feature script that I wrote last night <laughs> while drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and it's based on my relationship with my best friend, see, and it's, you know, and it's whatever, and there's heavy. like a funeral scene in it and all this stuff. And so, uh, you know, it is very personal in a lot of ways, but still it's hilarious that again, I mean, that time I wept, I like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I laid in the hotel room weeping because of my own script that I had read and was that I had written and was rereading, which is literally that's like literally a story about Steven Seagal, a famous oh, Steven yeah. Seagal story. <laughs> Please tell me. Well, it's like uh, I, I heard Rob Schneider tell it, but I've heard other people tell it too. He said he was on. He made some movie with Seagal in the nineties or something, and uh, he was told to go get him or some shit from his trailer. And he walks into his trailer, and Seagal's got like tears in his eyes, and he goes, <laughs> "I just read the most beautiful script." ever written and rob schneider's <laughs> like that's amazing who wrote it and he goes i did <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great and i've and i've done that unironically is what i'm saying which rob schneider and van damme that's the that's the team up we fucking need right now in this goddamn country Seagal, Van Damme. Seagal. Or, Seagal, Seagal, my bad. Yeah, Those no, the other one actually went different. It. Yes, they Damme. are. Yes, they are. Van Damme yes, is still are. ripped all the fuck and can do yeah. splits in the air and shit like that. You know, Steven Seagal yeah. is not he's, those things. Isn't he's he paying permanently... His former He's paying people to pretend that it's like... He's doing those videos where he grabs somebody and they it's fall so down. It's so funny. Yeah. Hey, he, let, me, he let me... Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I was going to say, let me read these... Uh, these other ones that we didn't cover. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead, and then we'll take a break. Let's read the hits. Milk Shakespeare, as we've already done. Yeah. Robert Frosted Flakes. Malt <laughs> Whitman. Ezra Poundcake. <laughs> Robert Frosty. That was Mark. Pablo <laughs> Neruti Tutti Fresh and Fruity. That's also Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Waldo Emerson Big Jowls. We did that one. Oscar <laughs> Meyer Wild. <laughs> That's oh, Corey. Man, Walt. It? Yep, Walt Whitman's <laughs> Walt Whitman sampler, Corey. Hominy Dickinson. That one's good. That one was underrated. I don't it think I picked underrated. up on how funny that one was. There's one yeah. more. Two more. Uh, I got to scroll to them. It was Edgar Allan Foe. Said it the wrong yeah. way. And Edgar Allan Poe Boy. Oh, and Mayo <laughs> Angelou. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one that pissed me off the most because <laughs> earlier I was you could tell I was wanting to get in on the joke because I'd thrown two out there and I was like what are some other famous poets and I thought of her and I like, I was like my uh, Angelino's pasta restaurant like I couldn't fucking get anything and then Mayo Angelou was just right fucking there for the taking and I missed it alright let's take a break we'll be right back right after this
I'd honestly rather talk about her than fucking Elon and Chappelle, so that's fine by me. I mean, he got he got booed, right? So I mean, that I hits. can't. I just can't believe. I don't know why, but I just can't believe Dave Chappelle's that out of touch. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's heartbreaking because, yeah. like, it, it, obviously he's not. Please, when I say this, don't think that I mean that Dave Chappelle and Kanye are on the same plane because I do not. But like, you know, there with Kanye for a long time. I was always like, okay, yeah, just stop right now. You know what I mean? Just, 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 just level out right now, and you'll be fine. You can come back. And obviously, we know he's too far gone now. And I'm like sitting here going, like, God damn it, how, how else is Dave Chappelle gonna break my fucking? Because like with the trans shit, it's horrible. But I get it from a fucked up perspective of like, I must make the thing that they don't find funny, funny. It's not right, but I get it, you know? But with Elon, he literally just brings him out on stage. And it's like, what was even the point? Right. Hey, San Francisco, here's Elon Musk. That, that's no material. My thing too. Like, I know. That, that, that was my thing, too. Is like, what, like, what was supposed to happen? Like, what, I don't get what... Cause yeah, like and I, Elon's gonna fucking start telling jokes or something. Like what? Right. I, what? What is supposed to happen? And also, like, if that had happened, it would at least be like okay. But but it's also it's like I bet Elon thought like yeah, I'll just go out there and be filleted by the crowd. Right. They'll fucking you know I'll just go out there and it'll hit super hard for everybody because my you know my cult I hit. is in attendance and I hit real hard or whatever and then so the fact that it went the opposite way does hit for me. But yeah, it's like I don't what was. What what were they even like trying to do? I don't really. I, but, but I guess like, they were gonna do like Elon, a bumping mics type thing. Like he was gonna just go back and forth with Elon, and right. he, Dave would make it funny while Elon's just sort of there. Is probably what they were planning. I assume. Right. But yeah, I don't know. Go ahead, Drew. I was just gonna say Elon believing that he's adored makes sense. It's part of his personality, and Dave believing he's adored. He being Dave makes sense. It's part of his personality. But like, how they not like like he he wouldn't bring Kanye on right now, you know what I mean? He he can he, yeah. he can recognize in other people that there's so I just he's so out of touch. It's just it's weird. I'm not even like as upset as I just find it so fucking it's weird. strange. And, and I know there's a lot of people that are gonna be going like, well, the reason he did it is because you're talking about it, aren't you? And it's like, dude, listen, Dave Chappelle does not need any more press. He can't sell out enough shows like he he plays the biggest arena he sells the maximum amount of tickets like he don't need this shit and there's part of me that feels like dave Chappelle and a lot of older comedians get this way and like we're gonna have to fight it our whole lives where especially this this crop of like the whole oh don't cancel me don't cancel me they stop Ugh. going for they i know they, it's like they stop going for the joke and exclusively go for what will piss everybody off because that's funny. I just want to see how many people I can piss off. And it's almost like in Chappelle's mind, he's like, it'll make a bunch of people mad if I just bring Elon out. So I'm going to do that and then just look at look at how fucking mad they are just because they get off on how mad they make a crowd now. I've never – when did it stop being – Let's make them laugh and just go, let's piss everybody the fuck off. But I feel like Chappelle could probably convince himself that he makes the live crowd happy and then this fake bullshit yeah, right. crowd on the that's, internet that he doesn't respect mad. Right. And the fact that I he think. thought his live crowd would like Elon, but it would piss off the internet. Like, I agree with you, right. Corey. That was probably his goal. I, but I, I think he thought this will hit for my cool fans. Right, that right. shows how fucking out of touch he is and how he really doesn't realize who's been coming to his shows in the first place to me. Cause it's like, this proves to me what I've kind of thought. You don't realize how uncool the people who think your trans jokes are good are. You don't really fucking right. know that the allegedly you quit your show. Cause they was laugh, laughing at the lo wrong part, bruh. What do you think's been happening? And you even went too far for those motherfuckers. It's crazy to me. I don't know. It's crazy to me. It reminded me of that scene, in, like when he gets out there and he starts getting booed, and then it's like, 
you know, he tries to say something and it doesn't work. It reminded me of that uh, Colin Quinn in the movie The Comedian. He's like, it don't matter how fuck. He's like, stand up. Is, coming on stage is the ultimate equalizer because it don't matter how famous you are. He's like, Jack Nicholson, you give him five minutes of grace. But after that, it's like, hey, do something. Make me fucking laugh. But they booed that motherfucker out the room. And he, of course, he's on Twitter talking about it. He goes, it was actually 90% cheers and 10% <laughs> booze, as if that's a thing you can know. But, I mean, it sounded like overwhelmingly buoy to me and then of course he was talking about like oh yeah all the leftists in san francisco fucking hate me i guess mm-hmm. yeah the leftists who go to date dude he's so full of shit and and i know that about him but it's like i just thought dave was smarter than that i guess and then also the 90 percent thing dude so you're telling me 90 percent of people were so excited about you being there but they wouldn't let you talk yeah right <laughs> Them 10% was loud as fuck, man. Maybe, maybe those 90% loved him so much, they were like, let's not let him speak because he'll ruin this. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. Like I said, man, if he'd have gone up there and was like, Elon's going to do a top five, I would still think it was weird, but I'd be like, all right, well, at least that's something. It's just, I can't get Elon over how bizarre it is. Elon is a arrogant nerd. There's nothing cooler than a nerd who knows like what they're nerdy about, and then they share that with you, and there's nothing worse than a fucking nerd who thinks they're cool. Fuck Elon Musk. Yeah, that's I'd true. Love to He's punch like him the- in his fucking face. Yeah, he don't hit, and uh, it's made Twitter a worse place, which is great because of the like. I haven't been on, and this is stupid. This is very dumb of me because as an entertainer, I should be as active on every single social media, even if I fucking hate it. But I fucked off from Facebook because it just, you know, it's like, God damn it. It's just this place is, is for just sharing all this stupid conspiracy bullshit and like people that I know talking shit. I'm going to go over to Twitter, which is fun. People write one liner jokes and share videos and shit. And now, like, of course, 15,000 of my followers have just left. <laughs> Because they were like, fuck Twitter. So that's fun. And then also, now it's just like, there there does seem to be, like, he can say, like, oh, hate speech and misinformation is down. That may be true across the board, but not in my fucking echo chamber of a goddamn feed. It's not. That's not true at all. He's totally, how would he know that? He fired all the people who keep track of that data. Right. This dude is Donald Trump, just a fucking Gen X version of it. And, you know, well, he's, he's got good more at money, it. too. He's good at staying in the algorithm. He's good at all that shit. You know, you can't knock that. I hate when people say he's a terrible CEO because he doesn't know anything about cars. It's like, dude, if you sit there and you tell me that the stock price of his company is artificially elevated, it sounds like he's good at his fucking job because that's technically what his job is. But the idea that he's cool or innovative or any of that shit makes me want to fucking die. I, I literally can't believe it. I literally can't believe Joe Rogan thinks he's cool. I, I, I don't understand how you could think that fucking dude is cool. I, I please understand this is an isolated uh, sentence. What I'm about to say, uh, and I I just mean it for what it is. But you said Elon Musk is like the Trump for the Gen Xers, dude. Donald Trump is way cooler than that motherfucker. And I'm not I saying that, Donald, that. <laughs> I'm not saying that Trump is cool. Please don't out there be listening. To this. He's saying Trump is cool. I'm saying he's cooler than that motherfucker. Be more funny. You know to what hang I'm out saying? With. Funnier, for sure. Like. They they both say vile, terrible things, but I will actually listen to Trump say it because I'm like, okay, man, he's got the fucking rhythm. You know what I mean? He had a like, good run. <laughs> Trump became president because he was good at debating and entertaining. And I'm not saying that right. means he should have been president. Elon of Musk not. Fuck him. is so fucking boring. God, I hate him so right. much. Yeah, I just want to, all I want to do is state for the record that y'all are hitting for me, and I agree with everything you're saying. I just don't have anything to add to it. Uh, Elon don't hit at all. He ain't cool. He don't hit it talking or nothing. Uh, he just, you know, takes credit for shit. He don't really do. He's like, he's one of them that's like, hey, get a bunch of minions in here. And then he screams at them like, right. I want this car to fly by December. Leave. And then like, if they make the car fly, then it's like, it's a brilliant innovation, you know, that he, that he gets credit for. And, but then if they if don't, fucks they, up. they just all get fired, <laughs> and, you know, yeah. or whatever, I, or, or the whip gets cracked again. And, you know, I'm just not overly impressed by none of that shit. And like, dude, Donald Trump is objectively funnier than Elon. Yeah. Like that part, <laughs> well, Donald Trump does exactly what you just said. Elon does. It's <clears throat> just that when he fires them, he insults their fat wives. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. 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 Calls them a stinky piece of shit on, 
the internet. Yeah. Uh, what was the hey, Trey? I know John you've Bolton. said a million. Yeah, tell me the John Bolton story. Again. I mean, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't remember exactly what he tweeted. So I will be paraphrasing, but it was something along the lines of just out of completely out of nowhere. One day, Donald Trump just tweets something to the effect of, "You know." I've worked with a lot of stupid, boring, worthless people in my life, but I don't think anybody has ever <laughs> been more of a useless piece of trash than John Bolton. This guy would sit in meetings and say nothing, so quiet, so stupid, like he's like with his dumb mustache or whatever. And it, it's like, and apparently, of course. We were laughing about it. Of course, Smart Mark knew immediately. He was like, oh, Bolton's got a book coming out. Trump's trying to get in front of it or whatever. But it just yeah, seemed right. like it just looked like Trump just, just was sitting on the toilet or at home or something. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, fucking John Bolton. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Throw that fucking piece of shit. And, uh, no, no, it was, it. Yeah. John I, Bolton. <laughs> He smells John Bolton don't like, hit, by the way. You know? <laughs> no, he don't hit, but no, like and, and Elon has none of that. When Elon tries to tweet shit like that, he just says, like, hey, this guy is a pedophile, am I right? That's yeah, it. Right. It's the whole tweet. Pro, uh, pronouns, pronouns. That's right, actually yeah. that was my just, favorite. That was my Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say my favorite genre of Trump shit was that when he would be shitting on somebody that also don't hit for me so that for one brief moment I could be on the train. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, I, okay, all right, I'm with you on this shit. John Bolton fucking sucks. <laughs> they, you know what I they, mean? Like, I could, So I, I found it, and it's, <laughs> it's fucking... It's <laughs> Is it even better? Than the way, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, real quick, what did you, what did, what did you just say? What You were... Uh, uh, I, you, you're talking about when somebody who you don't times. like is shitting on um, yeah. somebody you also don't like, you can get behind them. Like like yeah. when Scalia would randomly, may he rest in hell, write an opinion I agreed with, but he was so fucking funny and mean to the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when uh, Trump would shit on like people like John Bolton, it's like for one brief second, I'm on Donald Trump's team and it's invigorating. You know what I mean? So, like, and all the other ways, fuck him. But I've this been is saying from, if aliens attack, we should let him be in charge for that week. Go ahead. Trey. So this is from November 15th, 2020. So this is like, you know, 10 days <laughs> or so after he's had the election stolen from him. Oh, so right. I'm saying, you know, he's. Like he's taking time out of a very busy day. He's got other shit <laughs> you know going I mean? on. Like he's yeah. got he's got major other <laughs> shit going on at this point in time, right? And in the middle of that, he gets on Twitter and tweets, quote, John Bolton was one of the dumbest people in government that I've ever had the quote pleasure to work with. <laughs> A sullen, dull, and quiet guy. He added nothing to national security except, gee, let's go to war. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, and this is this is hilarious because they say that every Trump, like every Trump tweet is like a meta tweet because they're all like every all of his accusations are confessions because he's that's right. how narcissists be. So this next part's good too, because he says also illegally released much classified information. A real hilarious. dope. A real dope. A real Excellent. dope. Yeah. That's uh, fucking tremendous. That's got everything you want to have a Trump tweet as far as I'm concerned. It's even got, like I said, it's got the like self-referential uh, shit in the middle with the classified, like the retroactively uh, damning, you know, part of it. Right. That all of his shit tends to have. And uh, yeah. It's a real fucking shame that he had to fuck up a good thing and become president. Yeah. Otherwise... We could have, we would all still hated his politics and thought he was an asshole, but man, we'd just be fucking reading his Twitter and loving every goddamn well, second of well, it. Act, th th right. That's where the two overlap. Didn't Elon like bring him back, but he won't that's come what, back? I, I got something? it. I got it pulled up. Okay. So Elon put out like a, um, a, po a poll. Should we let Trump back on? And it was like <laughs> 51 to 49% let him back on. And then he was like, the people have spoken. So everyone's like, oh, he's going to let Donald Trump back on. What about on. the Don electoral Twitter? Yeah. And then Trump went on, um, what is it called? Truth or some truth shit? Truth social. Truth social. Truth yeah. social where you uh, retruth things. You retruth he, he truth. Tweets, he tweets a picture of him and Elon in 
the Oval Office, and he writes, <laughs> When Elon Musk came to the White House asking me for help on all of his many subsidized projects, whether it's electric <laughs> cars that don't drive long enough, driverless, <laughs> car, driverless cars that crash, or <laughs> rocket ships to nowhere, without which... <laughs> Without which subsidies, he'd be worthless. Telling me how he was a big Trump fan and Republican, I could have said, drop to your knees and beg, and he would have done it. Now Elon should focus on getting himself out of the Twitter mess. This is a second tweet with the same picture. Now a Elon second truth. should a second truth. Yes. Uh. Okay. Now Elon should focus on getting himself out of the Twitter mess because he could owe forty four billion for something that is perhaps worthless. Also, lots of competition for electric cars. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is, fu- and so he's basically like, I don't need Twitter. Fuck you. I got my own thing going on where we clearly don't have a character limit on our fucking truths. And then Elon's response to that was a gif of the Simpsons papa yelling at a cloud, which that, is fine. You know, that's, I, what, I, yeah. that, I, I that's what I was going to say earlier when I, I, what I was trying to remember that I forgot was I was just going to say, it's like he just, he literally just like shit posts and memes and stuff. You know what I mean? That's like it. he just re- yeah. he just shares Dude, like me- he's just like a random imagine- Reddit troll or whatever. Like, but he thinks he hits because of it. I know. It's like, you ain't doing. You ain't making up none of them hits. Dude, like, imagine fucking- John Rockefeller doing that shit. Imagine right. John Rockefeller or yeah, one of the right. Vanderbilts doing that shit. Yeah, they right. w- they didn't have time no. for that shit because they actually hit and were titans of industry that fucking earned it. You know what I mean? Fuck, yeah. God damn it. Like, I think about that all the time. I'm like, you are one of the richest people on earth. Like, I've said this a million times. If I had $44 billion, you know where the last place you'd see my ass was? Twitter. Yeah. Or uh-huh. any of them. And this it's motherfucker's really more weird. active now. I mean, of course, it's his work, but still. Yeah, fuck it was him. his work then, though. I will say that that is, he, he understood that his job as CEO is to elevate his company and get their profile in the algorithm. And he's good at that. I can't say that earlier and then take it away from him now. But That's it true. is pathetic. I mean, I find it pathetic. I, I got to go. I got another pod I got to do. Yeah, we're done. Okay. Let's do it. Thank- Thank you all for listening to the Well Read Show. We love to stick around longer, but we got to go. Tune in next week if you got nothing to do. Thank you. God bless you. Good night and skew.